Let's talk about nodes present in atomic and molecular orbitals through the lens of molecular orbital theory. A node is a region where you will absolutely never find an electron. So it is a region of zero electron density. Let's start off with our first question. Which species or which molecular orbital has more nodes? The sigma 1s molecular orbital or the sigma 1s star molecular orbital? Recall that the sigma 1s is a bonding molecular orbital and the sigma 1s star is an anti-bonding molecular orbital. A key rule for figuring out this question is knowing that as energy increases, your number of nodes also increases. So what this question is really asking is does a bonding molecular orbital or an anti-bonding molecular orbital have more energy? The one that has more energy will have more nodes. So we can recall from our molecular orbital diagrams that an anti-bonding molecular orbital lies higher in energy than a bonding molecular orbital. So we know that the sigma 1s star anti-bonding molecular orbital must have more energy and therefore more nodes than the sigma 1s bonding molecular orbital. So this is our answer for this question. Now. Let's draw out a picture to illustrate what these nodes look like in the context of these actual molecular orbitals forming. Two 1s orbitals can bond by overlapping their spheres and form a sigma bond through this overlap in the shaded region. And this is an illustration of the sigma 1s bonding molecular orbital forming. Now, what does the sigma 1s star antibonding molecular orbital look like? We still have the two 1s orbitals, the two spheres. However, they are now separated by a sort of nodal plane in the center, represented by this dashed line. And this is now a, the sigma star antibonding molecular orbital. And so this right here is a nodal plane where there's no electron density. Remember that there could be electrons within these orbitals, okay? But there's no electrons in between them. And so there's no bond that exists there. And this is what the anti-bonding representation really is. However, in this overlap in the bonding molecular orbital, you can see that there's electrons present which form a sigma bond. So on the left, we have no nodes. So there's no nodes here. However, there's one node on the right in our antibonding molecular orbital, one node. So again, sigma 1s star, the antibonding species, has more nodes here than the bonding species, sigma 1s. Let's look at our next question. Which species has more nodes? The sigma 1s star antibonding molecular orbital or the sigma 2s star antibonding molecular orbital. Remember that as we increase the energy, the number of nodes also increases. Both of these are antibonding molecular orbitals. So we can exclude that consideration from our analysis as it won't differentiate either of the two species from one another. The thing that is different here or the 1s and the 2s. So on the left, there's two 1s atomic orbitals interacting to form the antibonding molecular orbital. However, on the right, there's two 2s atomic orbitals interacting to form this antibonding molecular orbital. Because 2s is higher in energy than 1s, because it has a higher principal quantum number n of two compared to one, the sigma 2s star antibonding molecular orbital is higher in energy than the sigma 1s star antibonding 
molecular orbital. Therefore, sigma 2s star has more nodes than sigma 1s star. Finally, which species has more nodes? The pi 2p molecular orbital or the sigma 2p molecular orbital? For this question, it's best to approach it by drawing a picture. Remember that the 2p orbitals are dumbbell shaped, like that. A pi bond forms due to the side by side overlap of those p orbitals. So we actually need to flip this around here and we'll draw it slightly differently, like this. And if we get a second p orbital that comes in, a pi bond forms through an overlap like this, side by side. And we have two regions of overlap, shaded in black here, which represent our pi bond from these two p orbitals. Next, let's draw a representation of sigma 2p. So a sigma bond will form due to, due to the head-to-head -head overlap of these 2p atomic orbitals. So we have one 2p atomic orbital here, and then another one here that overlaps head to head, and we have a region of overlap forming a molecular orbital, and there's our sigma bond. So now, which species has more nodes? On a p orbital, the node is always represented by this area where we have a pinch in the orbital. So on the left, this species has a node right to the center here, through the two pinches in the p orbitals. So this is our one node on the left. And on the right, we have two nodes going through these two p orbitals, or the two pinches in these p orbitals. So here's one node, and there's the second node. So on the left, we have one node, and on the right, we have two nodes. And this difference really arises due to the orientation of the way these bonds form. On the left, the nodes align, and this means we only have one nodal plane that encompasses both pinches in the p orbitals. However, on the right, the head-to-head -head overlap of the sigma bond means that we'll have two separate nodes that go through these two different p orbitals. So, because the sigma 2p species has more nodes than the pi 2p species, we can say that this is our answer to this question. And this really arises out of our two representations that we drew of the different bonding structures present. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching.